Greg Knibular here at GNK Concepts. We just want to bring to you a couple hot button items that we keep getting a lot of phone calls on. So we got a few things to touch on on corn and beans both. First of all, we're getting a lot of questions on why are beans not looking that great? Why are they looking stressed? What can we do to fix them? And the natural inclination is, is people want to fix it. We've had people call and ask, should I spray this? Should I spray sugar? Um, So-and-so wants me to spray this or spray that. I'm telling you right now, a struggling bean plant will not get any kind of reaction or benefit until it recovers on its own. So right now we're standing in a spot that's a little bit of a depressional area. There's some pockets that just took on a lot of rain here a week or so ago. Um, in some cases, too much rain. We were really dry, then we almost got too much. So what tends to happen is, is those beans that look yellow and sickly and struggling, they're suffocating and they're having a hard time nodulating. So I dug this bean plant up here. Now this isn't a very big plant. This was later planting, planted. It's a stressed area. There's actually decent nodulation starting. Now a week ago, there were no nodules on these bean plants and they're actually slowly improving. And we can now see today that they're starting to develop nodules which will fixate nitrogen and slowly start to recover and bring some color back to these beans. Believe it or not, the best thing you can do on beans like this is the do nothing approach. Sometimes the best decision is doing nothing. And in that case, that, that is the best choice. You have to let that thing nodulate, get some activity. It will not take in fungicide. It will not take in sugars for carbohydrates. It won't take in what you're trying to apply, a foliar fertilizer, until that plant recovers. The vegetative stage like this particular plant is in is very defensive. It can do a lot of things on its own. So you don't have to really fix it. The fixing time comes when we get towards and into the reproductive stages, which we're gonna talk about next. Everybody's interpretation of what's R1, what's R2, what's R3 seems to waver. And there's, there's confusion around that. So let me clear one thing up. This plant right here is in the vegetative stage. So this plant isn't anywhere close to being ready for fungicide. But let me show you a quick and dirty and easy way to determine when the plant is ready for fungicide. Generally speaking, if you count four nodes down from the top, so this is node one, two, three, four. When the fourth node down, when the pods that are set at that node are about a half inch long, that's the beginning window of spraying your beans. And you generally have about 10 days in that window of prime time. So you don't have to feel like you have to do it in a day or two. My rule of thumb on beans is to be late. My rule of thumb on corn, which we're gonna talk about, is, is early on corn, late on beans. Because all your new vegetation, like this young trifoliate, if you go too early, the new vegetation isn't protected. So try to go late so you protect all your new vegetation. Next, on nutrients, generally manganese applications and boron applications along with a fungicide and insecticide when this time is right, can be quite responsive. Boron will help retain new blossoms, which in turn set pods. So we like boron applications late. Beans are a real big user of manganese. And when you start flipping to the reproductive stage, we need more manganese. If you have to make herbicide applications yet, which there's still a lot to go out there, or if you have younger beans in the vegetative stage, we can support manganese applications early. Beans generally run low on manganese. We see it in our tissue tests all the time. However, they should go on good healthier looking beans. A struggling bean crop is a hard time to respond to manganese. The other thing is we like to see beans at least five to six trifoliates before you spray manganese. The more vegetation you have, the more chance you have to get manganese in the plant. If manganese hits the ground, it's not doing your plant any good. Those are important things to keep in mind. Okay, we're now into a cornfield here. We're either at or very near fungicide application timing on corn. I mentioned in beans, our rule of thumb on fungicide is to be early on corn, late on beans. So if anything, drag your feet on timing on beans. On corn, we like to be a little bit more aggressive, be a little bit ahead of the game. The important thing to keep in mind on corn, especially tassel time, 
is we want to make sure the tassel is out. So if you pull this particular whirl out, which obviously these tassels are not out, we can see that we're one, two leaves away from tassel. On an 85 degree day, we will unroll about one leaf every two to two and a half days. So in a week or less than, this, this will be fully tasseled, less than a week, probably four or five days. So the important thing to keep in mind is, is we need to protect everything from the ear leaf up. That's what feeds the ear. So we gotta let this last leaf unroll completely so we can protect that with fungicide when we make our application. So as soon as that's done, we can be ready to roll. Another thing I wanna address is multiple applications of fungicide. Back in the winter, our recommendation was to double spray corn for tar spot. If you're looking for tar spot, the place to start is at the bottom of the plant. It will move from the bottom up. It creates a spore shower, so it moves from the bottom up. Pull a lower leaf, inspect that leaf. Do you see any black spots? That's what tar spot will be. This is a very healthy leaf. There are no, no tar spot development whatsoever. Don't be confused by spots on a leaf. We've gotten reports and some questions on they think they have tar spot. Take your thumbnail, take a pocket knife. If you have tar spot, you cannot scrape that off the leaf. So tar spot is embedded into that leaf surface. So just be clear on that. We are not developing disease in this crop. We are actually staying rather healthy. We're in a geography at this very moment of not real heavy tar spot pressure. We've looked in some heavy tar spot pressure and we still aren't seeing it so far. We still expect to see it, particularly to the north, not so much to the south. We do still, however, support tassel fungicide applications. Our long-term history has proved very good success. We still want to spray tassel applications. We just are suggesting we don't need the vegetative pass, which is would be this corn's pass right now. We don't need that. So just keep that in mind. Thanks for tuning in to this week's video. If you have any questions, you know you can call, text, call the office, send us emails. We're just trying to bring clarity around some questions right now. We're in some critical junctures in this crop and we wanna make sure we take care of it. Have a good weekend. Check, check, chickity check. <laughs> Do I look doofusy? Right now, don't move around a whole bunch. Okay, go ahead.